the market is just is in a very good stage for it to take off. Yeah. So I probably will start seeing a lot more specialty coffee roasteries and cafes in India very soon. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode four of our five-part series with Yusuf. Yusuf, we are talking about World Coffee Conference and the emerging Indian specialty coffee market. In the last episode, we talked about the emerging market um, of this next generation of producers who are really focusing on specialty. And because of that, what we're getting is a local consumer market that is facilitating like this really beautiful bursting of new businesses that are all specialty focused. And I mentioned Blue Takai, um, Matt from Blue Takai is coming on the podcast in a few weeks. So make sure that you join, you tune into that uh, series folks. But what, from what you witnessed, what are you seeing is happening in the consuming uh, end of the market? So the first um, time I visited India, mm-hmm. that was 2019. Okay. And the market was very, uh, put it in a way, it was still new. I was okay. not, I'm not going to say very new, like, but I, I'll, I'll say New in terms of specialty coffee roasters and okay. uh, people drinking specialty coffee. Coffee was a thing because everybody was growing coffee. It's like, yeah, we're used to drinking coffee, but then they drink it. Um, at least in the Bangalore area, they call it filter coffee, but it's not the black filter coffee. It's with milk and sugar. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, so they call it South, in, uh, South India filter coffee or filter coffee. That has changed. So when I visited in the 22 and then I visited in the 23, I'm seeing more people focusing on speciality and then I see more people drinking speciality coffee more. So mm-hmm. I'm guessing that it is developing. It is a, a new way to blend in with people, especially the coffee producers, mm-hmm. because then you see them doing all these processes and it became part of the culture and then, then this family wants to support and then the market all of a sudden start evolving toward that uh, that scene. And a lot of new roasters are coming up. Uh, I think the education scene uh, is coming up in India, especially in, towards the specialty coffee, just like when, right, when courses we met John. Right, SCA courses things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. So Shout when out we to met John, John from, from the Coffee the, Institute. Uh, yeah, the Coffee, the Institute of Coffee. Yeah, Institute of Coffee. Shout out to John. Yeah, uh, how he's giving uh, courses to people yeah. to become professional baristas or brewers or what. Like, mm-hmm. um, so that's that's becoming a big thing, you know. Like, uh, specialty coffee is really making it, leaving its mark in the market. I think people are finding in it as a, a fun market to enter, mm-hmm. even though it's going to be very challenging. But uh, I'm loving how the India market bringing some so many unique ideas and fun and it really could help also to push the producers work outside because there is an Indian roastery with a cool branding that are going out to public yeah when what I found was really fun was like you look at a brand like Subco yeah Rahul and and Rahul and what they're doing is really cool as well you know the Indian grown cacao and Indian grown coffee and they've built this brand off those two products Indian grown yeah. they're selling Indian chocolate and they're selling Indian specialty coffee and the branding is beautiful exactly. it's yeah. awesome right so a few years ago probably won't see a lot of people like Subco but now you'll start seeing people using Subco or Bluetooth kinds of inspiration to push yeah. themselves out you know, yeah. um, the market is just is in a very good stage for it to take off. Yeah. So I probably will start seeing a lot more specialty coffee roasteries and cafes in India very soon. 
Folks, our first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, is now available for you to learn at your own pace for just 50 euros, and it comes with a certificate upon completion. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for more details. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. I had a lot of people come to my talk, like there was hundreds and hundreds of people at my talk, and, and they were there to figure out how to build businesses. They were there to figure out, you know, b- the idea of community and how it helps them as cafe owners and and uh, roastery owners. And the, the questions that I kept getting asked during the workshop was all about uh, the emergence of different kinds of trends and what they should be focusing on what they should be thinking about with regards to building short-term versus building long-term. Um, how can they position themselves uniquely in the market? The majority of people were asking all the right questions. There was this really interesting, um, I think I taught, did I tell you about the horse nurtured coffee? The horse? Horse nurtured coffee. Yeah, yeah you did. I, yeah, I, yeah folks, you did. We're... Folks, there was this really interesting um you know, there's a lot of people that are trying to figure out which trend they should pick up on. And there was an interesting um, question that came during my workshop about horse nurtured coffee. And and I have thought I had heard a lot of things, but I um, this one was different for me. Um, and the idea of horse nurtured coffee is that the manure that's being used is different Uh, For this coffee, it's horse manure rather than cow manure. So, you know, that sparked a whole bunch of of conversations around the difference between cow-nurtured coffee and horse-nurtured coffee. And, you know, it took us down this rabbit hole of like when you're opening a business, what is going to be your your USP, your unique selling proposition? And what if everybody's using Indian coffee, right? You're not really – I mean, you could serve other coffee, but that's going to be so much more expensive than serving Indian coffee because of all the tariffs that you have to pay to do it. So if you're not using the coffee that you're serving necessarily as your USP, you have to use something outside of that to start finding a way to separate yourself out from your competitors. I mean, Go ahead, Yusuf. I think India as as a country is so huge that you could use so many coffee origin like coffee or regions. let's say coffee regions mm. within india and you will get complete different cups and right because it's different climate and different uh, but that's you know, what's going to be exciting that like the to see the way that these businesses start separating themselves out from each other and to figure out are they going how the consuming end of the market is going to inform the producing end of the market so are um are businesses who are selling who are creating the consumer because that's still an emerging part of the the whole supply chain as well the the end consumer is still predominantly a tea drinking society they still predominantly drink chai Right, so yeah, bringing a, them on board to coffee is still a massive road that's ahead. Yeah, it's right? still tea, instant coffee, yeah. um, robusta blends with arabicas with sugar. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the way to get it out there, you will have to start teaching them, making them be part of the experience, give them something completely different. Yeah, uh, and it's going to be challenging to convince the people to pay a, pay a more premium price. Right. Because speciality is more premium and it's more expensive. So yeah. you'll have to think about that. But I think it's going to happen because you have a lot of pop- population who lived abroad, who have been in contact or worked uh, with the outside world. So the coffee and how it is evolving. And I think it's becoming more of like a, a curiosity. Yeah. to people to 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 go discover what is this speciality thing why do we have coffees but i want to see is does india really have good coffee and i think that's what creates businesses you know sometimes they're creating momentum curiosity 
which is the perfect place for us to end this episode and for you guys to join us for the next episode because what we're going to be talking about is the future of India's coffee market. It's going to be very, very exciting to watch this emerge. So join us for the final episode of this series, folks, where we, where we explore that. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.